hard disclosure. That's hard disclosure. Who who released it first? NASA, NASA talked about NASA. it in 2016, but Popular Mechanics, what about, they talked about it, but, I mean, officially you know for sure, because January was when uh, the, I think it was Popular Mechanics, yeah, Popular Mechanics uh, let, let out about right. the EM drive. That's, that's correct. They published, they published the article in January, but it wasn't officially released. Free energy was not officially recognized by the United States government. <laughs> Until November 2017th, and NASA did it. You're talking about all right. So know, NASA real, will get the credit real for that. Disclosure. Real hard disclosure, like it's real. Free energy is real, folks. NASA came out and said so. That's big. That's hard that disclosure. I, I almost I call it. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to do a PowerPoint and show you all how it works. In a very simple sixth grader level. When will you so release that? I can't wait. <laughs> We're going to get that out the next month or so. We're going to be doing all this, right. releasing this information. We we got we got to get through the holidays probably and all right. that. Well, but, open access. Right. They have open access, folks, uh, with uh, meaning open source, our Creative Commons license on papers, and I and and that's what you're referring to, right? It's open to the public. It's they had a peer review paper, measurements of impulsive thrust from a closed radio frequency cavity in vacuum. And right. that was uh, the Journal of Propulsion and Power. And it was but, December. That actually, that, was actually, that was actually held back and wasn't really released out to the public until November of 2017. It still got held back, even though it has that date when they completed it. It still was not open to the public until November of 2017. Which was a month or two after the Great Britain had awarded Shire the patent, which he filed for in 1999. So he didn't get the patent for what 18 years later. They had him under the Secrecy Act for 18 years. That poor guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well who gets credit? Because Eagle Networks had gotten said it got their fans on the EM drive. Uh, we'll have to do some research on. Since you're into the patents, who gets who has the patent on the M drive? The Chinese got their hands on it, and then they recreated it, and they built it, and they flew it out in space and tested it in August 2014. You remember the Chinese went to the moon in December of 2013, December 13, Mm -hmm. 2013. They went to the moon. We were already mining. We were already mining for years, all the different, weren't they? I mean, I had information that everything was being mined on the moon because we couldn't get our hands on a lot of the uh, material from space. And even back when uh, Lazar was working, so we only had a very minimal amount. Of course, he was talking about stuff we didn't have yet, right? He just had a minimal amount, and my husband worked on that. But he told me that the uh, we'll just say the ETs yeah. weren't allowing us to have elements, certain information. You're talking about the mining of the elements that are not on our element chart, chart of elements. Yeah. You're talking about the elements. Of, yeah. Okay. You got to tell them what what they're mining. You know. <laughs> well, Glass yeah, stone. but you know it it became uh, it became on the element charts about three or four of them after yeah, that's right. a lot. La- after Bob Lazar let us know, and I thought it was over with back then, 87 or 89. I think it was 89. And it's I really did. I thought it was over. I thought, okay, yeah. it's all over with. Yeah. Now we're going to go move the forward, new, and, new but element, it didn't happen. Uh, the, new yeah. the new element. No, they well, never released the element. And they're not releasing information on the elements either, but even though a lot of us know that they're there. You know, they're still not releasing the elements. We can't work with them. Private labs can't work with those elements, and we can't get them. And we, anyway, we can't even get articles on them. But that's okay. You know, I don't work with those elements. I work with standard stuff off the shelf. All of my generators are uh, made with standard off the shelf components. That's what I told you. I, well, let's I, get into the details real quick for. You told us you could tell us, right? You, you're working on switches with the water to replace oil, something of that nature. Can you refer to any of that? Working with your oh, switch? Oh, oh, oh you're Are, talking about the OPEC countries, the Arab, the, Arab, the OPEC countries. They, they, you know, the United States went to them and said, yes, well, free energy is coming out and oil is going to go away and, you know, we need to 
uh, we need you guys not to be too upset about that. And then they were like, well, what do you mean not upset about that? I mean, you're not going to buy our oil anymore? Buy our oil anymore? And they go, well, no, because we don't need oil anymore because free energy is free. You know, a magnetic, you know, it just comes right. Uh, a free energy generator doesn't use, it doesn't combust anything. It doesn't It doesn't burn anything. It doesn't store electricity. It's not a battery. It, it's energy that comes right from the vacuum of, of Right through the vacuum of the fabric of space comes right out of the fabric. Magnetic energy is that we just harvest magnetic energy that comes through the fabric of space, and we amplify the effect. Um, well, uh, Tesla amplified it 25,000 times. My generators are 24,000 over unity. So I know what Tesla did because I reinvented that. So I know what's possible with magnetic energy. You're talking about one with well, a COP at 24,000. Um, you're talking about the uh, generator the size of a shoebox can power a house for 30 years straight, nonstop. Nothing. It doesn't require any gas or any coal. It doesn't consume anything. It draws energy from the vacuum of space, from the fabric of space. But it's magnetic. Well, do they want to it's tell people about how it works? You know, because my – oh, darn it. My do, my have to mute me. Hush, Coco. Sorry, that has to be part of my thing. My dog, and we don't have any cats, but occasionally she thinks there is. But anyway, so yeah. can yeah. you talk yeah. about we do, we do that. you know between we do that between what I'm going on with the elements for those that are laymen, and uh, if you know what I mean, off of the charts that we're putting on the charts. But in the meantime, <laughs> since we don't have them on the planet anyway, <laughs> and we're mining the moon, and uh, I mean there's there's so many key factors here. But uh, putting it all together, let me let me put it that way. Uh, your equipment that we're going to possibly use your patents in the future for as an independent contractor, and you're being uh, spoken to. Is there a possibility that you can uh, explain how you can take ocean water and clean it up and trade water for oil? Because I told them in the last couple of years that. Water was going to be the new oil. So, can you explain that? How you trade for that? Yes, yes. So, OPEC okay, said, okay, go ahead. so oil's going away, and you're asking us to step, you know, not not you know, be upset about that. So, we need you to give us water because we want to become an agricultural concern, and we also want all of the elements out of seawater. We don't just want water, clean water, in order to grow things on on our on our deserts. Because we got lots of sun and we got lots of oil. Oil is used for fertilizer, by the way. Uh, they're going to use their oil for fertilizer because they're no longer going to be used for uh, running engines anymore. We're not going to be combusting uh, um, oil anymore. Uh, so we're going to be using it for fertilizer. They say, "Oh, we got we got oil. We're going to use it for fertilizer. We got lots we got lots of sun. We don't have water. We need a lot of water." We said, "Well, how much water do you want?" We actually had to ask them how much water they wanted. They said, mm. "We said, well, they we need at least 200 million acre feet." million acre feet is a lot of water, folks. It's a real lot of water every year. They want 200 to 300 million acre feet a year in water. Desalination, which means we have to take it out of the ocean and separate it out. They're willing to pay five cents a gallon for it, but the fact of the matter is it doesn't require, because the, all the elements that you take out of the sea are worth a lot more than five cents. You don't, I, they don't even need to pay us five cents. If we take the elements, we would make a fortune. Because uh, we can, t- because the the sea, the ocean has all the elements, <clears throat> all the precious all right. metals and everything. So we don't, either, we don't even need their five cents a gallon. They said, wait a second, we want the elements. You get five cents a gallon. I go, oh no, no. So we're in negotiations on that, but no one's been able to fill the contract. So they came to me and said, well, can you, can you fill the contract? I said, well, yeah, I know how to fill the contract, and I had to actually uh, do a whole presentation to one of their chief engineers. Uh, and prove it to them, which I did, and so they're they're convinced that I know how to fill the contract. Uh, so it's a very exciting time for me to be able to fill that contract. Uh, basically, we 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 disassociate. We can disassociate water. Uh, Westinghouse Plasma was the first one that did that. They don't use it. They don't use the disassociation technology. It's called plasma gasification. They don't use plasma gasification to separate seawater uh, because it doesn't pencil for them. And that's okay. It, it, it pencils when. You do it my way, but that's neither here nor there. Point is, is that uh, this association technology has been around for about 10 years. Plasma, Westinghouse Plasma has plants all over the world where they disassociate garbage and turn it into 50 megawatt electric generation plant. So disassociation, gasification, plasma gasification is not new. The way I do it is new. 
Um, but it only works when you have a free energy generator to run the system. It doesn't pass unless you have a free energy generator generator run system. So essentially you disassociate water into a separate element. And so water is H2O, one, two hydrogen molecules, one oxygen molecule, and you separate it into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. And no one's been able to put the two back together um, as fast as you separate. We can separate seawater. Everybody knows that. A lot of people know how to separate seawater very quickly in plasmic application. There are various people who have, who have uh, patents on that. But they don't know how to put the two gases back together as quickly as they separate. That's always been the, uh, the trick, the, the problem. And I solved that problem. And so I'm working on that patent now. Uh, believe it or not, it was actually NASA can. NASA solved the problem. I actually pulled down in 1965, we solved that problem. So I don't think I can patent it. I can patent a uh, modification of it because they didn't do it the way I'm going to do it. But they did suggest in the 1965 article how it could be done better, but they didn't actually do that. So it is patentable, uh, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it for the yeah. article. Well, let me let, let, me let Ken California. and Janet ask you a question, and then we're going to go the next hour. So we may do a little minute or two break for a moment to uh, or a little commercial or something, but in the I meantime, we uh, you, want me to go? you want me to come back? I'm sorry. Well, you want me yeah, to we back? got another hour. Oh, yeah, wow. we got another hour. We have a whole another hour, of course. But uh, let Ken, uh, because uh, there's a lot of names you've mentioned, and that's great. <laughs> so, uh, Ken, have you got any questions? You used to be a contractor and yeah, contracting with NASA and all of that, but I want to get into the next half of the show on global patents and helping people like yourself So uh, and tell them how you did your global patent. But, Ken, any questions thus far? Uh, in, in Janet, but let's let Ken and then Janet. We'll go to the next half. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Dan, uh, can I um, touch on the fact that NASA had the system working now? Apollo 13 had a problem where we had a leakage of the, the hydrogen, and that's where we had the explosion on Apollo 13, where we nearly lost the crew. Uh, was, were they, um, I wasn't working with that um, piece of hardware, but that was on the command module. So, um, did you, um, um, Dan? Did you work get involved with that at any? Uh, going back, a, no. I, did, your, I, I was in law. I practiced law for my career. I I started in physics in 1962. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. When I was age 62, which was three yeah. years ago. Three years ago, I started my physics career. Before then, I was uh, in law for 20 years. And my brother was. Uh, I, a aerospace engineer at, at the Johnson Space Center vacuum chamber, A and B there, but uh, he was also an attorney on our side of the family, so I worked with him a little bit and gave me a little insight on, on the legal uh, aspects of things. But m- mine has been more of let's uh, work with the people who invent it, like yourself, and then I'm the guy that flies it. So, you know, uh, I was just curious whether or not the, the uh, uh, well, the the power generators that we create and used on both the command and uh, command modules and the lunar modules that gave us the electrical power we needed for the systems, and that's why we just barely got them back on Apollo 13. I didn't know where they made going back in the history and kind of looked at that. That's like, a good question. Uh, though. Why, know, did, why didn't they use that? Why don't they use what they've got versus because they're committed to the oil? Oh, you know, like oil. None, of, none of that technology. None of that technology was, was released even to NASA. On none of that. It's only recently being released publicly, or even for NASA to use. That technology wasn't re- wasn't um, released to them. Was still a great military secret. All that technology was a great military secret until November 2017. I say it, it NASA's still not using secret. those generators. NASA doesn't have those generators. They're still not using them. They don't even have them yet. No, but. It's still it's still a secret because it's not out public very much. You're, you're doing what you can to get the word out, and that's what we do. But uh, well, know, well, no, no, those generators easy. are out. They're just a small COP, COP of four, COP of eight. It's a very small COP. It's not my level, which is twenty four thousand. COP of twenty four thousand is a very high level uh, solid state generator. It's very powerful. The only ones that have been released in public, Beacon Power, Gaia Energy, Rosh Energy, those are very low COP. They're very, they work, they're good, but they're, they're not NASA level, 
my generator is yeah. NASA level. NASA definitely wants what I have, and they want me to develop it. 